Um, welcome. Today we're going to be talking about reservoir network control. My name is Gavin Wardle. I'm here with Jim Weiniger and Michelle Christensen. Um, just to give a brief introduction of the system, uh, you can see in the figure there are four gravity drain tanks and we will be controlling the heights of the lower two tanks. Um, our disturbances will be the split fractions of the valves on either side and the manipulated variable will be the flow rates uh, of each pump. Our objective is to design a control system that will stabilize uh, any changes in disturbance or set point. In order to understand the dynamics of our reservoir network, we first um, need to derive our first principle of derivation. Um, by using our material balances, we linearized, um, put into deviation variables, and then into Laplace domain, which gave us um, four four transfer functions, two of which were first order and two that were second order. Um, and these model our process, as you can see in the figure on the bottom left. The red line signifies the process for a second order, and the green line shows the process for a first order. To continue uh, fitting our hybrid functions, uh, we collect data in a doublet test and uh, run this through uh, some model functions. Uh, first, we, we take our input u and run it through a transfer function as shown on the top, and this will give us a, an x or a height of, of the bottom tank. This was for the first order functions and our model. Um, after we fit our model, our parameters are shown on the left there under first order functions. For our second order functions, it is the equivalent of running our input u through a transfer function to output a height x, and that would be a top tank, and then that becomes an input to a height y after going through a second transfer function. So our second order transfer function is the equivalent of two first order transfer functions. And we fit two uh, models to arrive at our parameters for our second order function. Um, now we're going to talk about the PID tuning. Uh, we did both a non-interacting and interacting PID control. Uh, we set the split fractions to 0.3 and just analyzed changes in set points. Um, as you can see on the top right, our feed forward control ended up being a second order transfer function over a first order transfer function and we were only to use able to use a feed forward gain. Um, as you can see in the figure on the bottom, the interacting controller was more stable and a little less aggressive. It slowly approaches the set point, whereas the non-interacting controller approaches the set point and, and diverges. We found the non-interacting controller to be highly unstable and uh, so we went with the interacting controller. Now that we had our uh, gain for each of our transfer functions, we wanted to understand our system and model, model parameters better. And to do this, we did a relative gain ray analysis. And as shown, you can see that there are two negative gammas. Um, and these show that our two loops are fighting each other as they're trying to reach their individual set points. And we also had two gammas that were greater than one, which showed that we had strong interacting relationships between the two loops that we were trying to control. To conclude our uh, control analysis, we will do a comparison between our PID controller and a model predictive controller, as was given. Uh, initially, we set our set points at 0.5 for both tanks, and both the PID controller and model predictive controller arrived quickly at our set point and converged uh, very well. However, when we varied our set points so that one tank was at 0.4 and the other at 0.6, we found that the PID controller oscillated greatly and very slowly converged on our set point, while the model predictive controller was unable to uh, converge. Finally, we altered our, uh, our gamma, or our disturbance, and lowered it from 0.3 to 0.2 and found that the oscillation in our PID controller was still there, but the convergence happened more quickly. Ultimately, the PID controller uh, seemed better for when our set points were different, 
but when the set points were equal at 0.5, the model predictive controller worked best.